Hi, I'm Mark Clover and welcome to Photo Training For You and welcome back into the studio. Uh, today we're here with Heather, one of our young teen models, even though she's in her 20s, I think she's getting old now anyway. But we're doing this kind of next top model kind of theme. Um, for us it was all really based around uh, ring flash many years ago, but that ring flash wasn't the portable flash that we're using here today. It was a studio based ring flash. Um, now of course with the invention of the ray flash, uh, which just fits onto the simple speed light, pretty much we could shoot this kind of photography anywhere we are. The kind of lens choice is concerned, we're using the 85mm 1.8, but we're going to be at around about f4.5 today. I might swap over the 24 to 105, I'll see how it goes. Um, we're using the speed light on camera with the ray flash on, on the front. It's all in manual, okay, here. So I'm on 200 ISO, 100 of the second at f4.5 on camera. The flash here is on manual power at a quarter power. That's what I've measured it at to give me that um, f4.5. And uh, then we've got this set to uh, zoom at 105, so it kind of sharpens the light and pushes it into the chamber more. That's a quick tip if you do have a ray flash or if you're going to get one. Um, my, I'm umbilicaled um, down to a bat battery pack so I can shoot basically every 1.1 seconds if I was on full power. Uh, I'm not going to be that today, but um, however, it'll allow me to shoot really, really fast. Uh, a couple little things. If you're using a battery power pack like I am here, don't get into the habit of shoot of shooting very very fast for a continual long time because otherwise you just burn out your flash guns and they're expensive to get repaired and so on. Another thing is to um, think think about a zoom lens specifically if you are using the likes of a ring flash because you don't have to zoom with your feet and uh, the trouble is when you're in manual power here um, and you zoom with your feet as in other words you walk away from the client or walk into the client your exposure is going to change because obviously the flash will get more intense or less intense as I move away from the subject themselves. So it's a technique you've got to learn, you've got to be willing to kind of either push your aperture up or bring it down as I move that step in. So for instance, if let's say I was on f5.6 and I stepped towards the client one full step, I would then change my working aperture to f8, step stop, it's as simple as that. If I was on 5.6 and I did that full step away from a client, then I'd be down to f4. So it's kind of knowing your kind of balances and so on. Saying that, I do have the abil ability here to swap straight into, t into TTL mode. And if I do that, I'm probably going to have to do it into a plus one and a half. Um, because it kind of won't see, it's supposed to be through, uh, through the lens, but all the speed lights, as soon as they're blocked, they kind of get themselves confused and so on. So we're going to have to be in the plus kind of bracketing no matter what. So in other words, um, you kind of do your first test shot and then kind of make sure you know exactly what your working aperture is. Otherwise, you're going to be fixing a lot of images in, with, in the likes of Photoshop itself. Um, I, forgot to say before, oh, I forgot to say before we start, this technique with the ring flash, I overexposed by half a stop in camera. Even though I've got the ability in the raw to correct it, really, I don't want to do that. What I'm trying to do is bleach out the skin a little bit more. It's great if we did have a young woman, a girl, uh, with kind of zits and everything else, even though the foundation is going to cover most of that up, kind of blasting them out with a bit of light is going to make them look pretty cool. Plus, I can add some boosting of contrast and colour just within the raw stage. So I am overexposing in, cam in camera. Remember, if you're in doubt, metre the power. So I would just get the metre... In front of Heather, I take the photograph and actually get my exposure from them there and then give, uh, give myself that either third or two or two thirds kind of lateral overexposure, depends on your kind of style. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, cool. over to the 24 to 105 lens now just to give me a little bit more variety and sort of put a step in and out as far as the expo exposure is concerned still on quarter power f4.5 f4 now just waiting for heather as normal So notice on the, um, the kind of the ring flash shots that because we've kind of zoom, zoomed out, 
obviously the concentration of the lighting is into the middle. That's what we've got here, of course, because it's lighting around, around, around the lens. A, a quick tip, in horizontal mode, no, uh, no problem at all. But when we're using the ray flash and we turn it to the vertical mode, you can see it slightly drops. So just put your hand just underneath there to bring back towards the middle. It's a great piece, a piece of kit. The ring flash is pretty much still used throughout the fashion industry today. Uh, why? Because it kind of allows this lovely kind of even light straight across the face and then a sudden fall, fall off in shadow wherever it falls away. In other words, anything that it's not a flat plane, it kind of just drops away from the cheek, the cheekbones here, then the chin, then at the back of the head and so on. You'll get a characteristic of a kind of a ring uh, kind of um, shadow, just very, very fine shadow running around them, them. And the closer the background you are, of course, the more you'll see it. The further away from the background you are, the less you'll see it. I can always light the background. We'll do some of that now in a minute. I'm going to change over to um, the shorter lens, the 85mm. And as quick as that. Um, the key thing is, I mean, if you're working in a really, really small studio, uh, the likes of the ring flash, this is called the Ray Flash adapter, yeah? You buy them specific for the speed light and for the, cam the camera body uh, to make sure that the lens is bang in, in the middle. It's a great piece of fun as well. Um, in fact, before Heather goes, I'll show you a little trick, which is very, very cool as well. Um, but uh, again, what it's doing, of course, it's putting that overall light around the scene. And if you're working in a small space, and remember, we've just worked in what, something by, what, nine feet, 10, that's close to 11 feet wide, wide there. And uh, we only used the cross towards here. So in a very small studio, 11 feet by 11 feet, let's say, this is pretty much uh, about 16 feet, 17 feet long, this length. We haven't used half of that. Uh, or, three, or th three quarters of that. So just think about what you're trying to do and the likes of the ray flash will allow you to pretty much work as a bit of a fun fashion photographer. Even for young kids in a white kind of box room, you could have lovely oak flooring on there, uh, simple white walls or colored walls and get a great series of images. Funky trick, uh, a quickie really, just using a really wide angle lens. Um, we've just taken the ring flash or the ray flash off, ca off camera now. We're basically going to just be holding it just away to kind of shoot and we're going to get this wicked kind of whoops show you that this w w weird kind of ring in here so it's kind of really kind of really strange do it me again leaning in excellent look around everybody see what's going down brothers on the side if you're on the wall for them dollars in the air yeah. show me how you Whoa. call let's get close sleep so your attention's undivided yeah. on the camera three and want the club divided but just the way that came off man i'm gonna come off man make it pop off then what you want to do Want to drink tonight, yeah, <laughs> and we got a, a cool way to uh, just actually get some fun images with the simple ring at uh, the ring flash. See you next time. Bye -bye.